Hello everyone, welcome to a fun and exciting episode of USTM podcast series. Today we have two special guests among us. We have Tamina Mozumdar and we have Ragini Das. They are alumni from the Department of Applied Biology, USTM. Let's hear their journey and experiences so far. So Tamina has recently started with her business venture called Provesis AI and Ragini Das who has pursued her MSc degree from the University of Kent, UK in Biotechnology and Business. So welcome to the show, Tamina and Ragini. Thank you. So Tamina, you pursued your bachelor's degree in biotechnology from USTM. How did the knowledge and experience help you in setting up Proesis AI? That's a great question actually. I was waiting for this question. So if you have seen a building, every time you have a building, at first what do you do? You have the foundation, right? While making a building, you, constructing a building, you have a foundation. So ProS is if you see as a building or my entire career, which I would like to call it as ProS is AI, that's my entire career. So the foundation was my bachelor's degree, which I pursued from USTM. That was the foundation of ProS is AI. And it holds the entire building into place. So that is what USTM is for me. When I started my journey at, U at USTM in the year 2017, so I had just dropped out of BTEC, BTEC civil engineering. I was doing my pursuing my BTEC civil engineering, and I have dropped out of it. I dropped it, and then I came to biotechnology, because while I was doing my civil engineering, I was teaching some of my cousins. So I was teaching them something related to a chapter called biotechnology in the NEET class 12 book. So I got so inspired and interested in that entire field that I thought of discontinuing the entire civil engineering course. I was in my fifth semester, so I had discontinued that and sorry, not fifth, fourth semester and I had discontinued that and I have come to USTM. So I had a kind of a push at the back of my mind where I had to answer so many people because everybody was asking me is this a this is a crazy idea like why would anybody do that you at least finish your civil engineering and then you go and do your uh, any other thing you want to do but at that time I was so um, I wanted to do it so bad that it was inside me that this is what I want I want to make my future in biotechnology and even while I was pursuing biotechnology I searched on internet I spoke to so many people but uh, it's kind of sad to say that there were not much positive responses I got over civil engineering but when I was studying it I knew this field has a potential and somehow I had to prove this to everybody it's not for them but for me it was to prove myself so that's how I started doing that when I started doing this obviously my parents I got Im immense support from my entire family they were always there for me no matter what I asked them like I wanted to do they were always there but more than that I was surprised by the support I got from this institution and my mentor Dr. Deboja Sharma, Dr. Satyakam Agarwala. So the amount of guidance I got, like that was unreal, really. Today when I speak of it, I just, I cannot thank and be grateful enough to this institution for what it has gotten me into. I went to Dr. Deboja Sharma one day. She was the one who was taking a subject in my first semester and she taught me something related to bioplastic and she was taking a general class. I went to her without thinking twice. I just went to her straight and I asked her, ma'am, uh, I want to try my hands on something I have seen on the internet and you were teaching about it. So there is a science day coming up. Can I try it? So that was the first push of my entire career. She, without a second doubt, she told me one line. You just do it. I am there. So there were so many times I could not attend classes. Uh, I, I used to be in the lab making that bioplastic. I am nowhere near that thing I was doing at that day. But because I was doing something which I had no idea about and I was pushed to do it, I was said, I was trusted. They, they showed me immense trust that yes, you do, we are there. 
because of that backing i kept moving forward and forward and forward so much so that i got the courage and confidence to do something which i could never even even imagine that i could do in life like having a startup i don't know if in 5 to 10 years if it's going to grow bigger than this or it's going to be like this but just there is one thing that i'm sure of i am going to work so hard because there are people like this my support system my backup system my entire team my mentors my parents i have so many people to prove to so i am not going to back off back off i am going to prove everyone for them for me for everybody who believes in me so that's what proess is is about proess is ai is for everyone who believes in me who believes in this field who believes in biotechnology and that's what the entire journey started that's how ustm does not just play a role it is the first and the main foundation of where i stand today and where proess is ai stands today that's all thank you so thank you tamina it was very amazing your journey has been very inspiring for me and i hope it's the same for the viewers watching this show um so moving on to ragini uh, i have been waiting to ask you this question for quite some time so how did you decide to go overseas like what kind of scholarships did you apply for and how was the entire process i would love to answer your question um the decision for me going abroad wasn't made overnight i have always dreamt of doing my further studies in abroad uh, like she was saying how deboja ma'am helped uh, she has always had my back i mean since i think since the semester of first and there was this ex professor um, which i would love to take the name dr seram anil singh sir he was another backbone to my um, my uh, career and viewers and uh, and the steps which i think you should write it down if you to have uh to uh, you, you need to do the rigorous research behind the universities you want to apply to uh anywhere around the country and why do you want to um apply to a certain country it can't be like you're applying to um a certain a different continent uh, for example it's oceania in here and then you're applying for europe and then you're applying for north america it can't be like that because the visa will be cancelled um it can be a little bit suspicious i would say so when i was doing it uh few of my well wishers they were like you should focus on at least two nations like that would be much better so i was focusing on germany as they have also uh, got really good research um you know facilities uh, as well as uk uk being one of the largest biotech research hub so that was that um the second point would be to develop your uh, uh your profile by saying that i don't mean just your academics i mean you should be included uh, in co-curricular activities like you are doing one right now and um, other than that uh, you know engage yourself with the faculties the teachers make good relationship with them uh, that's another thing because uh, in the end you need their support i still um, keep my contacts with them whenever i need them they are there for me um, it's they are just like one call away for me whenever i need them um, you you definitely need a letter of recommendations when you are applying for abroad so the faculties come in hand at that time so um you need to have a solid character during the whole uh, whole year when you are studying in here it can't be like you are good at academics but you are not very you know um great with the other things beat your uh, classmates or the faculties uh so you need to have a strong foundation there as well the third point would be to prepare for your ielts or toefl if you're you know applying for a english speaking country just like i did when i was applying for uk so the fourth and the most important point would be to craft your sop which is the statement of purpose it needs to have solid points like why are you applying why should they pick you uh, instead of all the lakhs and lakhs of students applying for the you know the the place uh, the fifth point would be to have a strong financial aid uh, by that i mean uh, seek for scholarships if uh, if you have time for it but i would say that um, before applying like really applying for your application uh, try to figure out the scholarship one year prior to it because the number of um, candidates are a lot and the scholarships and the scholarships are really less 
I don't think there are too many in Indian government. Uh, but if you're really looking into the scholarship, you can apply to the university scholarships they provide. And uh, last but not the least, I would say that you need to have all your transcripts, your test scores, um, the letter of like, recommendations, which I said, is really important. Uh, another point would be to have um, to have uh, what do you call it um, the the transcript and the NOC which is required in the visa application. It's quite important there. So, so with this we have almost reached to the end of this podcast. So we have Tamina. Tamina, what is that one takeaway message you'd like to give for the viewers watching this podcast? So the one takeaway message I would like to give everyone, irrespective of the age, uh, degree, or background, anything, is that it's a very powerful sentence. It's never give up. I dropped off a course. I did something new, biotechnology. I did something different than that, that is molecular and cellular biology. And then I extended to doing MTech AI and ML, which was nowhere, nowhere related to what I was doing. Nobody can ever think of doing a biotechnology and then going to AI or ML, which is a very advanced technology. But it is possible. And I want to tell everyone that it does not matter what you do, which background you are from, if you think you can make it work, you can make it work. And don't give it up for anything. So that's what I want to say. I don't know how much I, I have proved myself till now, but if I can sleep one night thinking that I, had, I have achieved something for the day, I think that's, that gives me a peaceful sleep. So I dream after I sleep, I wake up and I prove, try to prove that I am living my dream. So that's what I do every single day. I won't say that maybe in five years I might not, I might say something different. But today, what I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm sleeping peacefully thinking that I have done something for the day. So that's what I want to tell everyone. If you have the will to do something, please do it. Because we have 20 more years to live healthy, a healthy life, 20 more years to work and 20 more years to achieve everything that we want to achieve. So if it doesn't matter what anybody think of you, it doesn't matter what you are doing, but what matters is you are doing right for yourself and you are trying to prove yourself. It doesn't matter even if you fail. At least you have tried, you have given your best. So I want to give this as a takeaway for everyone. Don't give up on your dream. If you have a dream, work for it. It doesn't matter if it works or not, but don't give it up. Don't give it up for anything. So that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Tamina, for such a powerful takeaway message. So working tirelessly for your goals and never giving up is the recipe to a successful career, as Tamina has proved. And now moving on to Ragini. So what is one takeaway message you have for the viewers watching this podcast? I think Tamina has wonderfully summed up everything I wanted to say for the last segment. Um, <laughs> and um, I truly believe that actually if you dream of something, you should definitely go for it. Because I still remember as a kid, I always dreamt of going uh, to abroad to study for my f uh, masters and I did it. <laughs> it still feels like a dream to me, but it is a wonderful feeling. So I definitely believe that if you have a dream, you should work hard and push yourself because you on the way you'll find wonderful people who are there to help you guide you and show you the path you are meant to be so yeah so thank you tamina and thank you ragini it was amazing having you guys here and your journeys have been very inspiring and they did leave an imprint on me and i hope it's the same for the viewers watching this show so on this note we have reached the end of the podcast thank you everyone for watching the podcast and keep tuned for the upcoming episodes